Welcome back, everybody. Another week of Taurus Talk here at the SG Taurus Company. I'm your host, Matt LePan, flying solo again this week. But luckily, I'm joined by one of our incredible dealers, and that is Darren Hamilton, the owner of Central Cooling and Heating. Darren, thank you very much for joining the podcast. Thank you for having me, Matt. Very excited to have you on. You're our first dealer who's going to come on and talk some technical stuff. We've had on Rick Picard from Rodenheiser to talk about some training courses, but today we're going to have you on to talk about some ductless units. But before we get into that, can you just give the folks at home a brief overview of, of your company? You guys are based out of Uber and you kind of serve in our area. We're in our Wilmington branch, so you're native yeah. to our area. Yeah. Can you just talk to the folks a little bit about your company? Yes, absolutely. So uh, Center Cooling and Heating started in 1966. My father had started it out of the basement and from there quickly grew and moved into a building in Reading and you know and then we quickly it was late 70s moved into Woburn and been in Woburn since then. He retired around 2000 and uh, right now me and my brother Doug are the the owners and uh, run the business and we had different markets but we are all residential right now. Great so if you see one of their vans out there give them a wave especially yeah. up, if you're up yeah. in the area these guys do some great work. One of the big things that you guys do with your company is ductless units. Yes, correct. and you guys do a lot of Mitsubishi work. Yeah, a lot of people don't necessarily know everything there is to know about Mitsubishi. One of the reasons yeah. we have you on. Can you talk about the evolution you've seen from when you first started installing ductless units? You said off the air about ten to fifteen years ago when you started, through to now, and some of the evolution you've seen in it, and why it's so beneficial for your company now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, fifteen twenty years ago, I you know I can remember doing an installation. And I installed ductless for a client in their office. It was kind of a sunroom. And I went there to pick up the final payment after the unit was running. Everything was fine. When I was in the office, the unit came on. And back then, the units were either all on or all off. Controlled by temperature. But when I was standing there, the unit came on. And it was extremely loud. Air was blowing everywhere because it was large because of all the glass. And I remember cringing and thinking, like, oh, my God, in the back of my head. Like I would hate to have one of these in my house. And so that's one of the perceptions, you know, me as an owner, and I'm going out there selling these units that I had about the equipment. Along came technology changed with these units, and along came what's called the inverter. What the inverter does, it allows the unit, instead of being all on, all off, it allows it to vary its capacity, vary its speed. The big benefit to that is that now the units are extremely quiet, but at the same time, they're also extremely efficient because instead of it being all on and using all that electricity, you're kind of matching what you need for an output. So if it's only 80 degrees out, you don't need all that cooling all at once. And so it saves for your electric bill, and it is a lot quieter. So it's been great. Quickly after the inverter, what that brought to the market was the ability to have what's called a multi-zone unit. In the past, you always had one outdoor unit with one indoor unit. So I can remember years ago we had done ductless for a, a client and there was about eight units just outside sitting all around the house scattered all over the place and if you talk to a client about putting eight units outside they're like are you out of your mind you know no way right they didn't want the eyesore that it yeah. used to be yeah exactly so nowadays you can have one unit outside that can do up to eight indoor units so you don't have this this big problem with that brings versatility. Mitsubishi, the thing I like about Mitsubishi is their product line, the width of the product line. They have a lot of different sizes for equipment, but they also have different models. Everyone's used to thinking or seeing that unit that's hanging up on the wall. Even along those lines for the unit that's hanging up on the wall, they have different options. You can get designing units that are like look like stainless or they're black or whatever and but they also make low wall units they make what are called ceiling cassettes that you can kind of recess up into the ceiling the biggest thing is that you can now have ducted units so i talk to customers all the time well you know hey you know if you don't want to see the units hanging on the first floor where you're entertaining people coming through you're spending most of your time you can put a ducted system in the basement just like a regular unitary system and then upstairs, you can have a wall hung unit in each of the bedrooms. So it's kind of a win-win, and you can all do it from with one unit outside. Along the lines of those evolution, you know, you mentioned the unitary units. A lot of what Mitsubishi does and what all ductless work does 
is eliminate your ductwork. So it allows you in houses that aren't necessarily equipped for ductwork. Or okay. they might be older, they might be on a slab or small, you know, just a small area to be able to provide heating, cooling to all these different areas. What's the main benefit that you've seen for your company in installing these ductless units versus some of the bigger unitary units? I would say the cost. If you're installing a lot of these units, it can get expensive. It's not like it's, you know, cheap because it's not. But one of the things that's happened, you know, Massachusetts now all sheet metal contractors, we have to be licensed. So now there's new codes, um, which is a good thing because it's definitely brought the quality up. But like you said, with the ducted system, there's what's duct loss because it's not running in this actual space like a ductless unit would be. There's also air leakage. So now we have to seal ductwork because the new code is extremely tight. So the cost of installing ductwork has gotten extremely expensive. That's number one. Number two, all of my workers need to be licensed. So back in the days, I remember when I was a kid and I'm working with my dad, you know, we're, you know, we need a couple extra guys where we go hire them. They'd start the next day and you could have them out there installing systems where you can't do that anymore. They, they have to go to school. So indirectly, the cost of labor for those guys has gone up and up and up. It's a lot easier with the ductless. Along those lines, there are a lot of fly-by-night people chucking a truck guys out there going out there throwing them in and in the units although they're 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 easier they're not technically easier they are very complicated you want to make sure that you are hiring a good contractor who knows what they're doing because they are very technical absolutely along the lines of of innovations we've talked about you brought up whether it be the wall unit the low wall the high wall the ducted the ceiling cassettes, something else that's been a big innovation that really has helped contractors and, and homeowners alike has been hyperheat. Can you talk about how that kind of changed the game for ductless units? Oh yeah, absolutely. With a standard heat pump, what happens is that, so some flying a little bit, a heat pump in essence is kind of an air conditioner and some flying a little bit, it reverses the flow of the refrigerant. So now instead of just providing air conditioning, it can provide heat. Technically, even though it gets cold outside, there is heat in the air that the unit can pull out of the air and then through the refrigerant and then bring it into the house. When you have a standard heat pump, what happens is that when it gets to about 40 degrees outside, the capacity of the unit will start to drop off. And when you have a standard heat pump, by the time it's say five degrees outside, that's just the temperature in the industry that they use as a low point, by the time it's five degrees outside, the unit is about half its capacity. So if I had a three ton unit, when it gets to five degrees outside, I'm only getting a ton and a half capacity out of it. Then it self creates a problem. If I'm installing one of these units for a sunroom, so to speak, and they want it to completely heat through the winter and it can heat through the summer, well, I have a problem where I'm going to be telling them, like, okay, you're going to do it with the heat, but then when it gets really cold outside, you'll get some heat, but not enough. You're going to be warm, but not yeah. very warm. So Mitsubishi's hyperheat system, it, it's amazing because it is able to maintain full capacity down to five degrees outside. Back as the technology was going on in some of these units with these ductless split units, other manufacturers, they would actually check down at 15 degrees outside and just literally turn itself off because it was too cold to operate and it wanted to protect itself. Never a problem with Mitsubishi. I know the Mitsubishi will actually, you know, after five degrees, the capacity starts to drop off a little bit, but it'll keep running down to minus 15. You know, you'll still be getting heat out of it. At the same time, extremely efficient. Getting back a little bit to central cooling and heating, we started out as an ASI company with my dad. Back in the 90s, he was, you know, still running the business. We ended up hiring our first plumber, and so we do hot water boilers as well as doing air. We kind of do everything when it comes to heating and air conditioning for a home. So we did a lot of, um, got into a lot of geothermal systems and stuff like that. I remember when designing geothermal systems, I mean, it was great if you could get a 25 CR geothermal heat pump and people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to put these in. Well, there's a hyperheat one-to-one unit right now that Mitsubishi makes and it's 33.1 CR. And so people spend $100,000 for geothermal and I can install this unit that's a lot more efficient than that. And it is a one-to-one, but it's, it's nothing. Right. You know, 
I mean, it's going to vary depending on what goes on the install, and you would need more if you're doing the whole house. But it's amazing. The efficiency is so much higher. Um, it, it, it's pretty. It's exciting for what the future brings. And safe to say that when you're going ductless, hyperheat is pretty much your choice for installing these units. Oh yeah, absolutely. It, what I will do when I'm talking to the customer, sometimes I have clients who they're just interested in the air conditioning side. They have a boiler with hot water base go through the house. Um, so part of it is that these units really mostly come as heat pumps. They only make a couple models for air conditioning. So 99% of the time we're installing as a heat pump. And so I will say to the customer, if you're not interested in heat at all, I'm going to do a standard heat pump system. It won't be hyperheat because it is less expensive than hyperheat. But if they do want to, you know, they have that room that's, you know, 65 degrees. They want to bring it up a couple of degrees. That's good. I had a client I went to actually yesterday over in Cambridge. And one side of the house is going to be standard heat pump. But they're putting a little addition on the back for a bedroom. Well, that unit's going to have a hyperheat because it needs to be able to fully heat and air condition that room. They're not putting a different heat source. So I think that's the big point right there is that today with a heat pump, you can fully heat the room with a heat pump where in the past, if you look at unitary, when you had a conventional or a standard heat pump, um, you had to have something to make up that difference. And that's your electric heater in a unitary. There's a bad rap with heat pumps that heat pumps themselves are not efficient, but heat pumps are the most efficient way to heat. And I have this conversation with my clients all the time, and it's not the heat pump that's the issue. The heat pump itself is always efficient, but if you have standard type unitary heat pump and their capacity is dropping way off, you need to make that difference up. And so what they do is they stick an electric heater which is the most inefficient way to heat in there to make up the difference. So they're perfectly fine. They love their electric bill, you know, through October, November, and in the spring, you know, March and April, everything's fine. But when, you know, in the middle of, you know, January, February comes around, all of a sudden their electric bill goes to the roof. In, in their mind, they're blaming it on the heat pump, but it's really, it's the electric heater that's causing the problem. It's interesting you brought up additions on certain houses. These type of units are perfect for kids' playrooms. Your man cave that somebody has, you know, that might be yeah, like a yeah. finished garage or, or they kind of half-finished a basement or something like that. These units are perfect for that. And what you're talking about with this efficiency makes it so it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Correct. And for the installer, for the companies that are installing it, you know, you're running a line set to it. You're not having to rip apart anyone's ceiling. You're not having to take, a, take apart a whole wall for it. The biggest problem for years I would run into with Unitary is that someone will call up and say they're putting an addition on, they're putting a one bedroom on, and they want me to tie into the existing duct system. One of the conversations I always have with my clients is that remember that your existing heating system is run off a thermostat that's in the old part of the house, and think of the thermostat as like a light switch, and it's just controlled by temperature. Wherever that is when it hits 70 turn the light switch off when it gets above 70 turn it on that's what's controlling it now all of a sudden you have this addition i'm going to run a supply and return duct over to there number one it's built by today's standards so it's going to be insulated better it's going to have better windows it's going to be tighter and maybe even at that it has more exposure on it and it doesn't know the thermostat that's on the other part of the house doesn't know what's going on in that room and so now i throw a duct in there and i'm trying to make that room comfortable off of the other system and it's going to overheat, it's going to overcool, it's going to, maybe it's not heating enough, it, it's just not going to, because it's constructed completely different, it can't be comfortable really. Right. So that's where in it's very difficult to zone air because the unit wants to move some air through it. it, it just, I can remember having conversations with um, one of the guys in my office and um, we were designing high-end homes all the time and this was like 10, 15 years ago, and we'd have this conversation about our customers that complain the most are the ones that have air zoning. You know, it feels like the air is first, in one minute it's high velocity, and then the next minute it's low velocity, and it always feels like it's hunting, and you get air blowing, and, and you're trying to, the whole idea with today is you're trying to get it to have a nice even temperature, and zoning is counter to that with a unitary system. 
these ductless systems are they just match the load and it, it's just really a beautiful way easy way to make it its own zone because that room is going to act differently from the whole the rest of the other house yeah, i mean they're really designed for zoning out a house today's yeah. units are really designed for that getting back to one thing you talked about earlier when i hear complaints from people the biggest complaint i hear on ductless is uh, i have to have that big ugly thing hanging on my wall you mentioned the designer units you mentioned yeah. the redesigns of this when you bring a mitsubishi unit into people's houses more often than not isn't it true that you hear that's well, not as bad as i thought that well, that's not that ugly oh yeah absolutely years ago that was probably one of the biggest things also back when i was talking about there were one you know one stage they were all on all off every single person i spoke to would be like there's no way i'm putting one of those on my wall nowadays they're a lot more acceptable um, where it used to be like nine out of ten people did not want one hanging on their wall. Now it's like one out of ten would have an issue with it. And the big advantage is I say, well, I don't have to put something hanging on your wall. You know, I can do a ducted unit and you can do a small, you can still have the zones. It would get expensive having because those are a more expensive unit. But you can have a ducted unit and have multiple zones. And having the ceiling sets too. I know that it's something that's becoming more and more and more popular that we see with folks. And I know it with you guys as well, it's becoming very popular because you can recess it. You get the benefits of ductless, but without the look of ductless. Yeah, you do need to get access to the cassette to be able to service it. But along those lines, they have a new one that will fit right into the existing joist so you don't have to reframe things, et cetera, et cetera. But we've absolutely, I've done ceiling cassettes successfully in people's homes with you being able to get it, access it from the attic to be able to service it. And um, again, they love them. Yeah, it's great. And, you know, Mitsubishi is really, they continue to innovate. They continue to redesign everything. And, and I know you've seen a lot of success with it over at Central Cooling. Really, it's just a great way. To, it's a great option to look into. I think the main reason why, you know, I could sell any deck split. Why do I sell Mitsubishi? It's there. It is an excellent product, but it's also their versatility with the line that other manufacturers only make a couple of this size. And so I find that they have a lot of options that I don't have to say, well, okay, I can't do that with Mitsubishi. I got to do a different brand here. Um, they just have that wide line to meet every demand that you need. Absolutely. Yeah. And they continue to, to add to it and we continue to offer it to, to folks like you and other dealers out there. And, you know, we want to thank you first for coming on, talking about the Mitsubishi units, thank talking you, about the benefits of Ductless. Can you just let people know where they might be able to find you? You know, you have a great website, centralcooling.com, but can you just let people know the yes, best way to find um, you? Yes, absolutely. You can, uh, if you call the office, our, we have an 800 number, which is 800-CENTRAL, C-E-N-T-R-A-L. Also, our Wuben number, main number, is 781-933-8288. We do have full service department, uh, guys on call. We do offer service contracts. We can either do maintenance only, full service, you know, whatever whatever you're looking for. But um, also, contact, we have a sales coordinator that'll set up an appointment for someone to come out. Great, and for dealers that are listening out there, Darren, is uh, he's a great guy to talk to, great resource. Somebody that just been all around one of the best guys in the business. So I know that he'd appreciate chatting with you if, if you see him at an event or if you see him out, just give him a big hello. Yeah, where I am, we are a member of ACA, Air Conditioning Contractors America. Um, if anyone is not a member of ACA, I strongly suggest that they join. I can't tell you how much we've learned. Learn from other ACA dealers. Um, it's really, I, I, you know, one of the big guys in the industry. Uh, Ray Isaac has been you know, huge help. Um, he's up in Rochester, New York. Quoting him, he always says, uh, he does a lot of R&D, rob and duplicate. And so that's a big part of uh, Acker is, you know, there's people who have probably been through what you're going through as far as business difficulties. And it's good to go to national meetings, local meetings, and you're able to discuss what you're going through and people are able to help you and say, you know what, I went that th through that same exact problem. This is how I dealt with it. There, first, we want to thank you again. Check them out at centralcooling.com, and you can check us out on our website at sgtourist.com slash podcast, or you can check us out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Use the hashtag Taurus Talk to suggest a topic or just to let us know what you think. Well, thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next week on Taurus Talk.